and welcome to this live stream of Infantry Outdoors. Yours truly, your favorite disabled DJ. I'm the Blind Sniper, DJ Infantry, welcoming you to this deer hunting live stream. Hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are around the world. And if you're watching on the replay, I hope you enjoy this live stream and get as much information from it as we're going to try to put out tonight. As I said, my name is DJ Infantry, the host and creator of Infantry Outdoors. So glad to have you guys with us. Um, tonight's topic is going to be, as we know, on deer hunting. Next week, I will be headed out to Arkansas for my very first deer hunt. We're calling it Operation Deer Down Mission Arkansas. And for those that helped and supported so far uh, and made donations, thank you so much. And for Tactical Technician and everybody who participated in the raffle last week, his box is headed out of here tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a great time with great, great, great expectations. My first deer, uh, I'm going to be flying out by myself. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So tonight, I figured we would talk all about deer hunting. How's your season going? What do you have to bring to the table? What pointers can you give me? What tips can you give me? What do's and don'ts do I do and what do's and don'ts don't I do? But before we get into that, of course, tonight is sponsored by my good friends at Water Purifications, um, Water Purification Products. If you guys are looking to get pure water at your fingertips, look no further than my friends at waterpurificationproducts.com. Check them out today and make sure that if you use promo code infantry, you'll get yourself an additional savings off anything that you order with them. Um, also, Silver Connections Group, if you're looking for social media, websites, uh, internet rankings, things like that, you know, in today's day and world, everything is on the internet, so we have to make sure that we are ranked and boosted as much as we can be. Where did my little folder go? Oh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> so, if you're looking for that website, you want to get your business boosted higher on the Google rankings, let my friends at Silver Connections take care of that for you. You can check them out at silverconnectionsmobile.com. So that's the sponsors for tonight. Tonight's drink, we're still on this red stag tip. Boy, I'll tell you what. But next week, we will be uh, having a new sponsor. I'll let you know about that. We will be live streaming from Arkansas next Friday, so make sure you guys tune in. Uh, as again, like I said, it is Operation Deer Down, Mission Arkansas. Infantry's first deer. Um, God willing, I'll be able to get one. Binks, what's up, brother? I have your package going out tomorrow as well as Tactical Technician. Uh, I'm going to be sending you those cinnamon flavor pecans or pecans, however you guys choose to say. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Ja, help me, Ja. Uh, where is the thing? This is my channel. What's going on here, yo? All I want to do is pull up my channel. But yeah, that ain't happening. But yeah, Binks, I got your uh, package going out tomorrow. I did get your email, so I'll get that sent out to you, buddy. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to help support the Operation Deer Down, Mission Arkansas, remember that you can send us donations via PayPal, paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors, or our email with PayPal is infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. If you guys need to find any of this information, it's always located on our website at infantryoutdoors.com. You can find all of the ways to find us on social media. You can find out. This is really interesting. My laptop is going to videos by itself. I open YouTube, be your and it just goes to videos. Yeah, Friday night sad. panel. Yeah, whose live stream am I in? That Shiner guy. Hey, Rob. How you doing? I'm watching you, buddy. <laughs> watching Rob's live. That's too funny. How did that come up? I have no idea. I just opened YouTube. Like, my <laughs> tablet has a mind like of its Rob's own. Live stream of all things. You know, my, my tablet is just, like, randomly playing stuff here tonight. It's amazing. If you guys had it on, on the share screen, you would, have, like, get all kinds of exposure. All I want to do is go to my <laughs> channel. That's it. There we go. Your channel. So, uh, Binks, how's your week? How's everybody doing? Like I said, tonight we're going to be talking about deer and deer hunting. Um, I am flying out next Thursday for... Mike says, Rob's live. I never got his notification. Yeah, I didn't get a note either. I think it was uh, an old one, to be honest with you. Jeremy says, yo, infantry. Jeremy, yo, what's up, brother? 
Happy Friday, guys. Everybody that's in the chat so far, happy Friday. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. We love you here. We really do. It means a lot. So happy Friday. Cheers. So, yeah. So here's the thing. I'm headed out. And um, I need to kind of know things. Like, I need to know how to pack. Basically, I'm going bare bones, guys. I'm only taking what I'm wearing on the plane to be my there and back clothes. Because the rest of the weekend, Tactical Tech and I will be in camo. So I brought two sets of camo just in case. I mean, I could do it with one set. But if something happens, I'm bringing two sets of camo. Uh, I'm bringing socks. I'm bringing snake boots. I'm bringing cold weather gear gloves, meaning gloves and a mask. Uh, I have my hunter vest, yellow vest or orange vest rather. I know that yeah. much. So if you guys can tell me uh, any tips, if you have anything to offer, or if you want to come up here tonight and talk to me. Jeremy's at camp grilling, having a drink, getting ready to hunt me some deer in the morning. See, that's what I want to know. Jeremy, you want to come up and tell me how your season's going so far, bro? Come on, Mike man. Says, I told you, bro. I got you. I know you got me, Mike, but we got to make content, dude. We got to make. I love you, dude. I know you got me, but come on. Feel me out, brother. We got to make content. And, and you know, I know what I know. I'm not worried, dude. I'm not worried. We're coming home with dinner. You know, God is the only one that's going to be the deciding factor that we don't get it. So, you know, um, I'm confident. I'm, I'm, I, but I want to know. I want to learn about deer hunting. Um, I want to do it one day, but I want to be a big boy one day and put my big boy pants on and go hunt by my, you know, I can't go by myself legally, but I, I would like to, but so if anybody wants to come up and talk about deer hunting, how's your, Jeremy, how's your season? You know, tell me what's going on. Tell me what you're into. Um, yeah, I'll have the producer drop a big stinky link on the, uh, chat. Big stinky link. That's what we're going to call it from now. Yeah, we're gonna drop a big stinky link. What are you pulling off my wall? Your off it never was on the wall. It, well, it wasn't in the frame anymore. It came out of the frame. Well, let me do that real quick. Well, she has my diploma, so y'all can see that I'm somebody. Ready? Look, I'm a somebody. Wait, we have to cover. Oh, yeah. We have to cover this part. <laughs> but there, there's a diploma for Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut right? Schools of Broadcasting for. Let's see what it says. This certifies that DJ Infantry has successfully completed training in radio and television broadcasting and has what? Has received, I hate this kind of writing, advanced instruction in the field of communications and media operations. Yeah, buddy. Mm -hmm. It's your boy. So when I tell you I know how to do TV and radio, I know how to do TV and radio and internet and setting up studios and all that stuff. So I know that stuff and I've helped people out with that and I know how to edit and all that stuff. So what I'm asking tonight is what do you know about deer hunting? Let's get up on the panel tonight. I invite you as my guest. And if you're watching on the replay, you have any comments, questions or concerns, write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. And of course, guys, if you want to sponsor the trip, I'm leaving next week. OK, if you want to sponsor the trip, you can still do so. We will be putting you on all of the videos as sponsors. So if you guys want to make a donation, send it to paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors or infantry outdoors at yahoo.com is our email attached to our PayPal. So uh, let me know tonight if you do want to make a donation. I'll write it down on a piece of paper. I have it that I'm going to be you know, taking with me so that I know everybody that's made donations up until this point. Uh, everybody that was in the raffle. Um, we really do appreciate you. It does help out. It makes it, you know, a little bit easier on the wife and my kids for me to be able to step away for a few days in the attempt to get my first meat in the freezer ever. This is a really long time coming. So I'm excited. Right, so I'm very excited. I Binks and Jeremy. You want them both? Binks and Jeremy. Hold on. Let me get my cans on so I can hear Binks and Jeremy. <laughs> There it goes. It's blinking. It's blinking. No, that wasn't the button. You know, I need. 
There we go. I can hear clearly now. The headphones are on. Yeah. Hi, guys. How's it going? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Come on, producer. Okay, I made sure you're good. All right, I'm good. I got Binks and I got Jeremy. What's up, family? What's going on? Two things you want to know about. Can you hear? What's that? You want Mike too? Uh, yeah. Let's put all of us up there. Why the heck not? Hold on, we're gonna get the whole party going. I got you a four-way screen. You're good. Uh -huh. Four-way screen. So wait, I'm waiting on Jeremy it to come up. Top. I'm behind. You know me on the on the okay. tablet. I'm behind. Okay. But yeah. Mike, we got you? Yep. All right, five by five. We got Jeremy. Uh, uh, you sound like you're dying, bro. In the camp. <laughs> and Bing, sound My off. Service sucks. What's up? All right, we got everybody yeah. five by five. You're good. We're good. Yeah, the producer's like, I got everybody. I'm going to go sit down now and enjoy my drink. So happy Friday, guys. How are we all doing? Good. I'm working. Yeah, Mike, I know you're working because I got to have you off next weekend, right? That was the trade-off? Yep. All right. Well, Mike, I know you got me, and I know you keep saying that, but I want to hear from everybody else. How? Well, Binks, are you hunting this season? I've been out once, and I want to touch up on two things that are that's very important. Some people okay. don't pay attention attention to it and overthink it but it is probably one of the key things white tail hunting is the wind you have to play the wind if you do not play the wind that deer will smell you and you will wreck right. your hunt okay and as a blind person as crazy as, it, as this is to tell you people the um, i understand that as a blind person because i smell 10 times what you don't and what I smell, I, I almost, or I, a lot of times, I taste. So what he's saying, like, you know, people, you walk by people in Walmart and they have perfume on or cologne on. And mm -hmm. it, 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 some of it will make me vomit. Some of it will make me, like, want to follow them, lift me up off the ground because it smells so good. Um, but the scent, I, I, that's one thing Mike and I, right, Mike? We've been talking about the scent. And oh, yeah. I, we, for weeks, I have my clothes all of my camo out for the last week and a half hanging on a clothesline. And it's going to stay there till right before I leave. Then I'm going to stuff it into a, a one of them packy Ziploc bags, seal it up so no air can get into it. And that's how it's going to get from here to there. So I get no cologne, no accidental spillage, no scent of any kind by accident, potentially getting on my stuff I put out here in two weeks. Yeah, and then once you get up here too, uh, we talked about we're going to put it in a non-fragrance uh, trash bag, fill it up with oak leaves and pine, yep. pine needles, and we're going to let it sit in there. Another thing is, if you want to spend yep. money, I've never used them, but you can put them in a, a plastic airtight tote and then put those those earth wafers. I've never used them. I've heard they work. I've heard they not work. Well, like I told Mike, okay, as, as a kid, do, I, now mind you, I've never hunted, okay, but as a kid, I've been taught from the time I was little to now, I've been taught how to track, I've been taught how to hunt, I've been taught the methods of hunting, it is, and now here I am standing 41 years old, and for the second time in my life, because the first time was with Swamp Stalker Outdoors, uh, I will be able to apply what I have learned over 40 years, so... Like Mike and I were saying, I know you. Know, when you take me in the woods, yes, I'm disabled, but you don't have to worry about me unless I tell you to worry about me. You don't have to do for me unless I tell you to do for me, which you won't hear me do for you, me unless I break my leg or some crap and say, dude, I need you to carry me out. Um, but as far as this goes, where Mike would come in clutch or where Mike needs to come in clutch is identify identification of I'll hear the animal long before he will. So I'll know there's something in the area. And then he is going to help me identify, is that the buck we want? Is that the doe we want? Because there is a, a buck that, that is, is being saved for his dad. So he, again, if we see the buck, I have to wait and let him identify that as a mm -hmm. safety feature. Because I don't want to shoot a buck during doe season and a doe to shoot during buck season. And, you know, sometimes tree branches at a far distance, it, you don't have the sight that I do. 
they look kind of look like antlers sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's where Mike is going to come in clutch. Aside from that, it's pretty much going to be two buddies in, in, in the woods. I hope, you know. Yeah. Yep. But the same thing, I think we got to send down Pat. I think we got it covered. I was even telling him, you know, if it weren't for the fact that I was so damn scared going on this airplane with guns and, and camo and, and getting ready to go hunt, and I'm going to come back with, God willing, a cooler meat and guns. Um, we were talking about packing the the clothes that I have in the Ziploc bag with leaves in the bag. But I'm like, you know, if that goes to TSA, that might look like I'm trying to smuggle something or, you know, <laughs> a bag with leaves and clothes in it. What are you trying to hide, mister? <laughs> I'm picky. If you're like, if you know me in person about hunting, I am very picky on scent. Literally, I will. I've gotten to the point where I wash my hands in like mm. unscented soap. Taking yeah, we did that too. Clothes, Good point. The yep. clothes out of the dryer and putting it in a, a tote. Um, I get that scent. Right. Um, whatever the word is. I'm that, do you that use the, do you use spray? Stuff. Do you use the scent spray stuff? Yes, I do. Okay, so Mike, here's one person that we remember we were talking about. You never used it, and I never mm -hmm. used it. Um, what is your what is your thoughts on the spray? And now what for those who don't know what I'm saying when I'm saying the spray cover scent, cover scent right? It feels, basically feels right. It, it's basically nature in a bottle. Okay. When we were kids, the way that I was taught is the day before you go hunting, if you have time, you take your, your camo or your clothes you're gonna go hunting in, tie it to your bicycle, drag it through the woods. And then leave it on the porch overnight. Andrew Fisherman says, "Great to see you." Can't Andrew can't Fisherman, hold on. Can't hang around long. Hold on, I'm we got to stop the afternoon. broadcast. But this have a great stream and a great. Night. Andrew, great if you're still watching, and my my producer just walked in. If you are still just watching, brother, I love you, man. Cheers, God bless you. Hope we get together soon, man. If y'all don't know Andrew Fisherman, check Fisherman. him out. Make sure you got a, got his channel. I've not seen him in a while. That's why I'm saying, dude, I love this guy. He is a person that when I was at the radio station, we are we were on the same sides of the world because I work graveyard shift at the radio station. So while I was working, he was out about his day and doing YouTube and we were able to communicate and it, it gave me something to do. And a lot of the, the people on the other side of the world on my overnights, that's how I kept the party going. Um so to be with Andrew and then, and then we went through the fires. You guys remember the fires of, of um, Australia. Australia, the wildfires and everything that happened and they were reaching out for help. Um, right after that, when I lost contact with him. So when I finally did find him, I was so thankful and happy to hear that he was okay, that he was family was okay. Uh, and he wasn't affected. So, you know, big up Andrew. Fishman. I love you, bro. One day I'm coming. I'm coming to the back to the to to the Australian outback and I'm gonna have a good time with my buddy catching carp and <laughs> and and well you never know. I mean it's Andrew, you never know what he's gonna get infantry into, but we're gonna have a good time. So but yeah, I am sorry guys. It, he's that big of a person that I had to stop and just acknowledge the guy because I haven't seen him in forever. But yes, back to scent. Um, what we're talking about is spray. They have different brands, they have different makes, they have different models, they have different reasons for the spray and the spray meaning scent blocker um what do you what brand do you use and do you, what brands have you used let's start there don't say any particular like i like this one yet don't do that what brands have you used me personally i so far in my years of getting back into hunting i started i, I started as a kid and my right. dad passed away he's the one that got me into hunting and then I got back into it because my buddy and his dad got me back into it in like 2018. So within the two years of hunting, um, I've used, and thank God you're not sponsored by any, because then that would be a whole censor thing and whatever. But <laughs> I've used Scent Killer Gold. Dead Downwind, Nose Jammer, okay. I think Sent Away. Sent Away. I've heard that one. And 
uh, Sun Assassin. And I work with Sun Assassin. Okay, now, you work, meaning you are sponsored, you have a partnership with the company? Um, field staff. Okay, you're pro staff, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah, you're pro staff. Okay, well, this is, uh, now, you can't give me a biased opinion here, but what product, yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't, because I, I know you're pro staff, but you can't, because... I need you to tell me what I could, what you would seriously for a beginner hunter, okay, for a person just starting out because that's what the stream's about tonight. What would you tell them to go down, run down to the local tractor supplier, the local place, or online? What would you tell them to start off with getting? Because we're now again, these things cost different costs because you're getting different things for different things. So, what would you tell the newbie not to waste his time on and go get this? Let's just do those. Beat around the bush. Don't buy products X, Y, and Z. Buy X, A, B, and C. But don't favor just your sponsored product, obviously. I will touch up on that. Sun Assassin, you can't buy in storage. You have to out order online unless there's a certain place that is a dealer for them. Okay. You can't sell it in Walmart. I think so. Um... If I were to say anything, I don't have a contract with them or anything, but of course I'm going to use them over any other, but my second option that I've seen worked and my buddy uses, he brings on them and then I gave him some of the Sun Assassin too and he uses that stuff too. He uses the Dose Jammer and that stuff is supposed to block the dick. The, uh, the deer's nose and sense sensory glands or whatever. Okay. And it smells like vanilla. Okay. Literally, you're spraying <laughs> vanilla on you. And I, I don't know what is behind it. Okay. It smells good, but I wouldn't really want to smell like vanilla all the time. Oh, I, <laughs> right here, my vape is, I've got vanilla custard in it. Flavor wise, I'm not a vanilla ice cream guy. Okay, I don't like vanilla. I like chocolate. Uh, vanilla would be at the very bottom. I mean, I do enjoy it, but vape wise, I it I really enjoy it. Um, scent wise, I like the smell of vanilla. What's that? Oh, okay. Shiner is live, um, which will be rated by them later. Now we we've talked since. Now Mike and I have neither one of used this. Now we are going to start uh, in a ground blind, right, Mikey? Yeah, we're in a ground okay. blind. We're going to start in a ground blind. Now, this is on private land that him and his family have. Uh, he's uh, He's been out there scouting. He's been out there prepping. I uh, Mike will leave your secrets uh, to me, you on the phone. But he's been out there <laughs> prepping to give me the best opportunity, stationing the blind is in better places, thinking of my site, taking that into consideration, which is great. Um, and like you said, the wind now with us being in a ground blind. Now we may graduate. I may graduate that weekend and go up to a, a deer stand, a tree stand. We're going to see uh, whatever Mike's comfortable with and whatever I'm comfortable with. But in a ground blind, is the wind still so much a factor? Uh, I would still be cautious getting in to the stand or into the blind. You have to play the wind right. that way because you never know where the but we don't want to so leave a much, trail on the way in. I would, still, I would still play the wind, though. I would still cover myself in cover scent. Or if you don't do cover scent, then don't put any on. There's tons and tons of people that don't use it. It's just if, okay. if you have confidence in it, really. Right. Um, right. Well, I have confidence in tactical tech. That's what I have confidence in. So this trip, mm. and, and and like you were just saying, folks hunt different, okay? Just like folks fish different. Mm -hmm. Folks uh, camp different. Now, what we're not saying is mm -hmm. you have to go out and you have to buy scent blocker and you have to do this. and you No, you don't. What we're saying no, 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 is no, no. what's working for us 
or what? Uh, no, I didn't want to say us because I'm not in that category yet until I drop my first year. Um, what is working for Binks in this case and Mike in this tactical tech in this case is what we are bringing to the table. And if you have other stuff you want to suggest that might work for you, that's great. But again, everybody's different. We don't tell you you have to buy this to do mm -hmm. this. You can go to Walmart, go get you a hunting rifle and go out and go hunt. There's no reason you can't do that. You know, I've heard people tell me, oh, I only wash my clothes in game before I go hunt. I've heard um, uh, uh, Mikey was telling me what the ivory soap you have to wash in uh, unscented soap before you go. I've heard that as well. Um, the, the dragging your clothes to, you know, the dirt before you go out, uh, not taking brand new anything out uh, because it smells like machines and plastics and wow, and. and Curtis, Francis, and Shiner I guy. Touch up on that. I, I want to touch up on that subject. Go ahead, bro. Right there. Yeah, go ahead. Wash because or wear about new clothes. I learned that the hard way. Wear and wash your clothes in normal detergent. Do not buy and put it straight into. People use baking soda even to wash clothes. I've used. I used to do it. But I learned that the hard way. Oh, I, put, uh, I didn't have like any. He's on the road though. He'll be back. I didn't use any fancy. I didn't use any fancy like camo. I just had normal army camo. This is when I was first starting. Out. Right, right, right. And that's I, you know what I'm glad you said this, Binks, because there's a lot of folks that just like you said what I'm for, and that's what I want to bring to this table right here tonight is not the million dollar hunter. I don't want that. I want the, when I first started out, I had army Navy surplus camo, army military camo. You know what I mean? Like the, I want real stuff here and I might go ahead, man. I, I sorry to cut you off, but that's exactly what we're looking for is the real truth about hunting. Mike, sorry, I'm in a bad no, no worries, Mikey. We got you, bro. Uh, you're on the road. I know. I will talk to you. I'll touch on like you do not need a million dollars. You do not need to spend three, five thousand dollars on hunt clothes like Sitka and Scent Locker. Kuyu, well, what is your opinion now? Under because we about, that's what I was just about to say. What is your opinion on Under Armour for a scent blocker? Is it worth spending the extra quite a few dollars, boys and girls, because it says Under Armour? And thermal under armor is even more, by the way. Um, so what is your opinion on that? Do you like under armor? Do you trust it? Do you stand by it? At all? I, Mike says he uses I don't every usually wear under armor. So what's the difference? Hold up, Miss Producer. I will say uh scent locker or whatever uh there's even scent lock i think they're both the same yeah they have, yeah um a hundred, they have i'm pretty sure scent blocker has it in it too but i know scent lock has it and that's why a lot of people use it they have 100 percent pure carbon which is a scent charcoal fuser struggle basically yeah carbon i think it's i think it's car carbon yeah yeah, yeah. I mean that—that's another that's thing. You can really, like the old school hunters back in the day, like the old bush guys. They would, uh, they would use charcoal from the fire, rub it on their clothes, rub it on them, rub it on their face. It eliminates. I mean, you you sterilize water with it. Think about it, people. So you can start. You can brush your teeth with it. Um, there's a lot of uses for charcoal. Um, and then, but that comes back being, like I said, to drag your, drag your clothes through the dirt, like take them outside, get them dirty, kick them around, get, tie it in ball and let the kids play soccer for an hour. Um, get earth in your clothing. You want to smell like what your surroundings are. You want to smell like the fresh scent of gain. <laughs> That's a thing that I, I, with cover scents, there's unscented and then they have dirt natural earth some kind of earth name 
Mm -hmm. I don't usually buy the unscented stuff because I already really wash my stuff in unscented. I'm just putting on spray that is unscented and it's pretty pointless. I rather smell like earth, so Scent Assassin has a scent called Natural Earth, and that's personally what I use is that and right. it it's I personally I would I'm not saying for promotion or anything, but me I think it smells that good that I would wear it as like cologne. Binks, let me ask you a question, my friend, because you are a staff and all of that stuff for them. Is there any chance you could it, just throwing it out there? Could you send me a bottle of, of something that you you use on their line? that I would be able to my further hunts this year use and see what you're talking about. Could we do that? And I'll put it, I'll bring it up on a live stream and we'll do like another hunt night. Uh, Do I have any here? I would probably have to order ship it to you or I would have to place an order and have your address or whatever and ship it to you that way. Cause I just count. Okay. I would be, Instead of you getting it and ordering it, it would be cheaper for me to just order it and have it shipped order to me it from the website and ship it to you. Yep. Yeah, no, we know all about that, man. Tactical Tech, our, our sponsor, actually, for next now, Friday. I Well, here's the thing I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm learning. I, I know here in North Florida where I'm at, I'm going to be hunting hog and I'm going to be hunting deer. That for sure are the game animals that we have here that I will be hunting, God willing. Um, so whatever you think that you want me to see or to know about, if you want to send two different smells or two different types, I'm down for spraying myself and giving an honest opinion and telling if I'll, I'll do it right in the live stream. I'll spread <laughs> guys, it smells like dirt or it smells like Christmas tree or it smells like, you know. We'll do it right in the live stream. I mean, I don't mind. I want to learn. That's the whole thing. And I have nobody but the internet to teach me. So. I'll tell you three things that natural smells like. Dirt, leaves, and pine. I love the smell of pine. That's what I get from it. I love the smell of pine banks. Like to me, Christmas trees. Um, I buy the Febreze. Uh, it's called Woods, and I spray this whole damn place with it. I love it. This is like my cabin in the woods. Even though it's not a cabin, I, I treat it like it's a cabin. And I don't know if you guys seen the post. By the way, I put Flo the Bear up on the wall. He's in the living room. We started putting the things in the living room. Now we're finally getting to that point where Flo the Bear is now up on the wall. Um, I have him mounted temporarily until I make an actual frame for him in a nice mount. But if any of you guys out there have a mount in your house that you're looking at right now and going, you know, I really don't use it. I don't really look at it anymore. And you want to donate it to us, we will put it in the cabin. And when you guys get to come and collaborate with us, it will be here for pictures and for things like that. When we live stream from back from the living room and not the studio area, which we're going to do. Coming up this holiday season, Christmas. Binks, you ready for Christmas, bro? I'm so ready. I'm so ready for Christmas. I am and I'm not. I don't like the season, but I don't like the season. And I'm spending money on Christmas. It's not a big deal, but... And the fact that you your family members and you don't know what to get them is... Uh, yeah, I know that feeling. Hey, listen, I started decorating right before Thanksgiving, and I started years. doing that. I mean, it's- it, we we actually finished. I think the outside we're just about done today. And what's today? Like the fifth? I don't even know what the date is anymore. The fourth. So I, it took me two weeks, two and a half weeks this year to decorate the outside of the house. We got the tree. Trees decorated. I broke the star that we've had for 20 years. Um, so I have to go go and get a new star. But a dollar store star lasted 20 years. Amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we got everything done for Christmas. 25th 
if you guys did not see today's video, if you did see today's video, I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. Small Waters, how you doing, family? Happy Friday. I'm going to tell you that I'm giving away, thanks to these wonderful people for the holidays at Sung Life, I'm giving away a power inverter. All you have to do in the video is what I tell you to do in the video. I'm not going to say it on the live stream because out of five comments, not one person has put what they're supposed to put that wants this. Now, this thing is cool. If you're a YouTuber or if you're a fisherman, it has a damn cigarette lighter that you plug in and you get three USB charging ports, two 110 outlets, and an additional 12-volt cigarette female in the bottom. I know you can't see it on the camera, but you guys got to go check out the video. And if you did check out the video, you, you didn't watch it to the end because nobody commented what you're supposed to comment to win this. I'm giving it away Christmas along with um, a stocking. We're going to do a raffle for the stocking like we did for Thanksgiving. So if you didn't win, like Tactical Tech did on Thanksgiving, you can redeem yourself and come and win on Christmas. We're going to do a Christmas stocking raffle um, along with the Sung Life giveaway. So make sure you check out the video. Binks, did you see the video today? Did you comment on it? You need to comment, man. That's a cool, cool thing to get. I do not think I've watched it yet. I really haven't even looked at the subscriptions from the day on my TV because I usually watch videos on my TV and not my phone. Mm -hmm. Well, check I it out. There, at my subscriptions today. Everybody here can use an a uh, ACDC power inverter. Everybody. I know you can. And if you can't use it, grandma, un auntie, uncle, mom, dad, somebody can use it. If you want anyone else to come around, it's going to be in there. <laughs> All right, so we are talking hunting tonight. We have new <laughs> folks that come in the studio. Mike said I saw the video, but I decided against entering since I won the basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I have actually, you can only win once every 30 days. That is one of my rules. You get one winner per household per 30 days are That's the rules okay. to enter any contest with what we do. So you must be 18 years of, to enter, and you must not won anything in the last 30 days. And since we haven't had a contest in the last 30 days, you're good. Well, Mike, you're not. You're out. But everybody else can win. So we're going to put the link up here. If anybody wants to jump up here with me and Binks and discuss hunting, my very first hunting trip is next. I leave next Thursday. I arrive in Arkansas. Uh, I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I fly out Sunday to God willing. Everybody say a prayer for you, buddy, that I get my very first deer. This has been something that for eight years, I have had a license to go hunt. For seven of the eight years, I have had no one because my license states I must have someone go with me. I don't have friends like that in South Florida. In South Florida, the only thing you can hunt are tourists and iguanas. That's it. So, yeah, if you want to go hunt deer, you got to move where I moved. That's part of why I moved. <laughs> so... This hunt is very special because, again, it's I'm getting to collab with another YouTuber. I'm getting a lot, uh, able to meet more family. Um, it, it, even if I don't get anything, it's going to be awesome. You know, uh, I have to be honest. And even like like I tell people, when they come down and they go fish with me, Darren's Northern Life came down. We went fishing. Family, the water temp was 91 degrees. Do you think we had a bite? Mm -mm. Not one bite the whole day. Not one. But. He got to hold an alligator. We got to play with alligators. He got to see a panther. We got to play with, uh, uh what else did we play with? Everything. Everything. Every animal you can think, thanks to my friends at Sawgrass Rec Center. And, um, yeah. And we spent the day. You can always make lemonade out of lemons. Always. Mike says, I guess when anyways, because I'm just that awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. So, next week is a deer hunt. Says it's an honor to be part of this opportunity. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it, bro. I really do. And I thank your wife, Mrs. Mayhem, and, and the family. And we're going to have a good time. We really are. God is going to bless this trip. I'm convinced of that. If he didn't, he wouldn't make it happen. So who wants to come up and join me and Binks? Binks, we left off on scents. So we got the scent part covered. 
We got the clothing part covered. Yep. Obviously, for, for a deer hunt, you want to be camoed out because they have very good eyesight, very good sense of smell. They'll smell you long before they'll see you. So stay upwind. Wait, no. Down. Stay downwind. Downwind of whatever you're, right, yeah, Binks? Knew that. Downwind. Yeah, but uh, I've had a, a little bit. Yeah. So I said the opposite. The you were saying, in your face. The wind in your face, Whatever which is down. Wind. Yeah, you're downwind of the deer. And the way that that works is if you're if the deer is here and the wind's blowing this way and you're coming this way, he's going to smell you because the wind is blowing your smell that way. If what Binks is saying, the wind is at your face, you're walking this way and the wind is hitting your face, the deer is up here, you're going to smell the deer before he ever smells you in theory hypothetically, hypothetically. <laughs> i'll probably smell them before you guys ever see them because they have their own smell the deer do believe it or not <laughs> so we got scent we got clothing we've got i'm going to be in a in a ground blind we covered that also may even graduate to a deer stand okay binks do you do deer stands or ground blinds I've never hunted a ground blind, believe it or not. I just know a lot about them. I primarily hunt in tree stands. In tree stands, you got to play the wind hard, and you got to pay attention. And a lot more than a blind, because a blind, you're more enclosed, and your scent stays Can't go in the yeah. blind. You still got to yeah. stay scent free, but... Right, right, right. But you have... Imagine you're in a box versus open air. If you're in a box, the wind can't oh. blow what's in the box really like you would if you're out in the air. So, like I he's saying, and, and when you're up in a tree stand, mind you, they're up there 15, 20, 25 feet, 30 feet in the air, depending on a tree stand. So, your scent carries for distance. Mike said for warmth. <laughs> yeah, warmth too, because it, it's, it's going to be cold. I hope. Cause I I know I damn sure the wife bought me some cold weather stuff to make sure that her honey is nice and warm <laughs> and toasty and that tactical technician ain't gonna let parts freeze off that she needs. So we're good. You know, hey, listen, we got you, bro. Like I said, the wife don't want parts you freezing off. It's buggy heater. I, I love those things, dude. I love a bit buddy heater. When we go camping, see now people laugh when I say this. When we go camping in the winter time in Florida, we take a buddy heater with us. Ha 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 ha! Infantry, it's Florida. Yeah, did y'all see my pictures where the freaking heater froze into a solid block of ice in Florida? Did y'all see that? If you didn't, go to Facebook. I swear to God, my central heater I that runs that. this whole house. You see what I'm saying? It froze. The, even the AC guy was I like, it, the, the AC guy was like, was outside. it just the outside? No, man. The inside, this damn thing sounded like a tractor trailer was parked in my back window going, bah, 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 bah. there was nothing moving. It was frozen. It got into the upper 20s here in North Florida. We had a freeze warning. <laughs> I've got the father-in-law shooting texts to me. Hey, son, make sure you drip your, your faucets so they don't freeze and bust. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm from Miami area, family, where it, like 60 degrees is, is cold. And then it, if we get 40s, we're lucky. I haven't seen 40s. 30s since I went snowboarding in Tennessee 15 years ago. Honest to God. But if you see my post, you will see a house free heater frozen solid. And you tell me it don't get cold in Florida. <laughs> oh, it was funny. It was funny. The damn. We got to use the fireplace. Yeah, we used the hell out of the fireplace Northern for a couple Florida, of days. Northern Florida does. Southern Miami. They get cold, but not 30s. Not nowhere near. Maybe 40s nowadays. Their low was our high. Their high, their low for the nighttime was our high in the daytime, if that makes sense. And I'm six hours from where I'm originally from, 328 miles from Fort Lauderdale. So 
you know, it's a big change. Um, I had to make a few phone calls to understand the fireplace and that there was a little button that you could turn on and there's a fan that blows the heat and, you know, it's all new. Says I like him. Um, yes, I'm going to make sure he has plenty of those. But the biggest thing was I didn't want to blow up my house because many people have said, hey, yeah, you know, check your pipe. You got to make sure your pipe is clean. You're not a lot of creosote in there. Otherwise, you'll explode. And, you know, I don't know who was here before me. So I opened the flume and I shoved my arm about yay far up into the pipe and I felt the walls and it was like dirty, but I could feel the metal tin. So I knew it was okay. Otherwise, if there was a wood buildup, I wouldn't even lit a fire. But, yeah, I think I did all right. We survived our first cold front. <laughs> Mike, I hope it snows, dude. If it snows <laughs> when I'm there. Back up, uh, You're using Miami the Cubans to put on the snow carcass. What, really what did he say? He said it's 60 degrees in Miami. The Cubans would put on the snow carcass. No, at 60 degrees, the Cubans wouldn't come outside. They stay in the house. Dude, I'm dead ass serious. My best friend of over 25 years is Cuban. I love him. I love his mama. I love Abuela. I love all of them. Damn it. If he drops below 70, the Cubans don't come outside. No. 60? No, 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 no. That's too cold for them. No, no, no. They <laughs> opened up a snow uh, resort in down, like, a little south of us that they opened up a that snow Yeah, it closed up. because it couldn't make snow. No, or they something. opened it back up and they said business has never been better. They figured out. They oh, well, there you go. Hey, there, so if, yeah, for those of you guys who want a vacation, there's a snow ski park in Florida. That's right. I said a snow ski park in Florida. You come snowboard, you come skiing, you come snow tubing. I'm not, I'm nothing to do with these people, but I'm going to go there. I am. And the blind guy is going to show you how badass I am on a snowboard and hope I, I don't break my leg. But definitely snow tubing. Like a downhill but, yeah, we're going to have fun. Binks, our next topic, brother. I heard you were getting ready to bring something up there. I want to touch back up on hunt clothes. Hunt clothes, like I said, you don't need five, three, five thousand dollars hunt clothes for the whole season. I wear Walmart, Realtree, basic clothing. The most expensive Is thing... It? I have in my hunting tote, in my closet, was given to me by my buddy's dad, and that is a Drake non-typical heavyweight jacket. And that's like a $250, $300 jacket. Mm. That's exactly what I, I have. I've got I just real got tree given to me. So, is it real tree? I have real tree. All over is real tree, or do I have mossy oak too? You have. I won't let you mix and match, so it's all real tree. Okay, yeah, no, I have all real tree, but I have different patterns. I have uh, the rip stop. I know that for sure because I bought a ton of that. Break, uh, uh, the breakaway. Yeah. I have. My wife keeps up with this. Basically, to me, once you start getting into tones and shades, that's where I have to hold it up and go, "Hey, did, did these match?" I can't do that. So, but then again, I'm never one that really gives a damn if you're perfectly matched in camo because if you go out into the woods, nothing in the woods is perfectly matched anyway. So I, I just don't understand that that whole I have to be all this or I have to be all of that. Are you that way? Like you have to well, when you go out. On the season. What is it? The, the camo does depend on the season. Right, and it does. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean don't dress for the season. I don't mean fall colors. I don't mean spring colors. I don't mean that. What I'm saying is that you you don't have to have all the I same breakaway like shit, in order to go hunt. Mossy Oak. So you two won't match. So you'll be in Mossy, he'll be in Mossy Oak, you'll be in Real Dream. Well, there you go. He'll be good. At least we won't match. Then that would look really awkward. Two guys in a blind would match clothes, sitting <laughs> closely together, talking about their feelings until the deer walks by. <laughs> <laughs> Uh no, hey, but it, it, I'm I not saying that in a bad I way. Get him to match as best as possible. Yeah, the wife helps me match I because think. again, the blind guy has a trouble with the patterns, you know. But I've seen guys that go in blue jeans and a camo shirt and a gray vest, or not a gray vest, an right. orange vest and orange hat, and Bob's your uncle. At least your hat's reversible, you know. And they get stuff. So I've seen guys go out there in full on ghillie suits. And hide in the woods. 
I want to touch up, touch up on that. The deer see in UV rays. They see, I think white. Uh, I did. They do a. They have a deer vision test on YouTube. Like if you were to go in straight camo to them, it looks like gray. Okay. So. They see what is, UV now, rays, so it, I hear they if you have a lot more. of UV stuff, like UV colors on your clothes, then they'll pick you up easier. Um, then what? What yeah. about the orange? Because supposedly, when you wear hunter orange, the deer can't see the hunter orange. That's, That's why right. part of the reason why it's that color is the deer can't see it, but the hunter damn sure can. Do you know about that, or is that a myth? I do not percent sure from far away. You stick out like a sword. You look Let's like a pumpkin in a tree stand. Exactly. Exactly. Hold on. Let me Google it. Let's see what Google tells us. Can deer see the color orange? According to Pittsburgh Post Gazette, their color vision is limited to the short and middle wavelength colors. As a result, deer likely can distinguish blue from red, but not green from red or orange from red. And I, I want to. Essentially, they see red when they see orange. Right, right. And I want to point something out to you guys, okay? As a person who's been blind or visually impaired uh, my entire life, what you hear about people saying this deer can see that, dogs can only see black and white, infantry can only see his hand in front of his face, doctors, doctors cannot tell you what I can see. My wife cannot tell you what i can see i can't tell you what the dog can see it's not possible now i can explain to you in the best way i can but i can't tell you what i see i might be able to tell you i can see colors i can see orange blue green full spectrum of the rainbow distance i can tell you i can see that tree over there but you'll never know what i can see I it's what I usually see it's just something you can never one of them things you can never fully explain i guess you know, um, unless you were in my shoes. So that whole, I don't know, that whole color thing, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't think people can tell me what an animal can see. I don't, I just don't know. I don't think so. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But what's to say he can't see better than us? What's to say he can't, he's half blind? You don't know, you know? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you don't know. You can't tell a person what they can see. I can't look at this screen right now and go, Binks, I can look at you and tell that you have 2020 vision. No, you can't do that, bro. You can't. You can't. Everybody's different. <laughs> Just my thoughts on that. So, Binks, what other topic? Now, all right, we've done. I mean, I might have 2020 vision. You might have 2020 vision. You don't even want to know what mine is. If I tell y'all, I'd have to break. Well, actually, here, I'll tell you. I'll break it down for you. I have zero. Okay, left eye is zero, no sight. The right eye, with these glasses on, is 20, and I was explaining this in a, in a stream before, 2100. Translation, what you guys can see at 100 feet away, I have to be 20 feet away to see the same thing. With my glasses off, I'm 2400 which means what you can see at 400 feet, clearly, I have to be 20 feet away to see the same thing, clearly, if that makes sense to you. But it all depends on what I'm looking at. I don't believe that. That's based upon a big-ass E, an SL, a, another row of letters, another row of letters. That's not based upon. Can you see that tree over there? Can you tell me what color that leaf is? It's not based upon anything real it's based upon you being able to distinguish a letter the lines and that kind of stuff that's what your eye chart and your eye test is based on so it's not really an accurate 
vision test in any way. It just, can you see this and distinguish it? Yes or no. But, yeah, that's how that works. All right, so let's move on here. So we've got clothes. We've got the blind versus tree stand. We've got scent, scent blocker. We've talked about washing your clothes. We've talked about washing your body. Let's move into the next category, which is getting down to the back barrel of the issue, which barrel being the hint word. Firepower. Firepower. Binks, what is your preferred round of choice for hunting deer? Gun wise, pew pew wise. Um, yeah, please keep it YouTube friendly. Pew pew. Yeah, forbidden word on YouTube. Yeah, the unbelievable. They're constitutional. I mean, we can't have to freedom say anything. packages. Yeah, freedom packages. Yeah, what's your favorite size of freedom package that you send through the mail? It's amazing. We have to talk like this. Um. <laughs> If anything, probably a 20 gauge or a 12. So you're you're a shot. When I, when I you're a shot. Hunting, but primarily. You're breaking in and out, Banks, if yeah, you can hear me. I do gun hunt, which is only gun season, but I... You there? Yeah, I got you now. You're you're cutting in and out as you go. I got that. You basically you you like shotguns. Is that right? See it's cutting yeah. out again. Yeah, yep, I got you. Yeah. Okay. I got a we got quite a delay between me and you. Does anybody in the chat also hunt deer with a shot pew pew? Now, that's what I was going to do it with, but I have a, a 12 gauge, uh, and I know you can use buckshot, but I opted this year to step it up and get a dedicated deer slash hog pew pew that I can use. And I went with the 308 or 762 by 51, or is it 54? I don't remember. But either way, I can shoot two bullets at the same gun, which is pretty neat. Do I got you back, Binks? Isn't it 59? It's what is it? 762 by what? 54. Is it 762 by 59? 51? Hold on. I think it's 76. I think it's 762 by 60. What six. two calibers can a 308 rifle shoot? And of course, you're not going to tell me. 308 Winchester, 762 by 51. NATO. Uh, Mike said skinning techniques and field dressing a deer. We're going to get to that, Mike. We got to get through the guns for or the, 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 the pew pews. Or he says, uh, the pew pews. Freedom seeds over 308 are good. Okay. Over 308. Okay. So that means 308, honestly, is the bottom of the, the, the freedom package line. What do you guys say on that? Because I don't know. I bought a 308 Freedom Package rounds and a delivery system um, thinking that was one of the better. Because here was my choices. It was going to be a 308, 30-06, or a 30-30. I went with the 308 thinking that was the best for deer and hog in my state. Do you guys agree? Should I want a bigger round? Talk to me. Bings, what do you say? Here, Ohio, if we do use pew pews for deer, um, it's I either shot pews or um, 
rifles. Okay. Now, rifle. What would be your 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 straight freedom one. packet straight of choice? Is, yeah. Straight. Let's see if we got any more cartridges. So we okay. can use the shoulder cartridges. Uh, Tactical Tech says he uses a 308 Freedom Package. Um, anybody else in the chat? I don't even know how many is watching here. We got six watching. Anybody else in the chat? Let me know what Freedom Package size you send in the mail for deer. Um, I'm curious because, like I said, it was gonna for me. It was gonna be a 308, 30 out six, or 30 30. I went with the 308. Um, I when I did, I did not know it did the 762 round. Until the guy told me, he's like, "Yeah, you know, a thirty-eight or uh, three fifty-seven can shoot three fifty-seven and thirty-eight, but the other way is not true." He goes, "With this rifle, you can shoot three hundred eight or seven six two. I'm like, "Oh, okay, you know, interesting." So, but that's the reason I, I ended up going that way is that was going to be one of my my one of three that I wanted to get. Now I still may down the road get a thirty 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 out six as well just to have because. They're a great freedom package delivery system. So, um, but in the meantime, I have my dedicated hunting rifle. And then what I did was I turned my shot pew into a home defense. I put a red dot. I put a side shot, a side saddle, lay, uh, flashlight system on it. Um, I want to get a extra round saddle for the side, you know, just make it look really cool for home defense. Up. Any comments on those pews other than tactical tech? Mm -hmm. All right. So now the other way you can also get yourself a deer, obviously, is by bow and arrow, which I'm sure Binks, that's your preferred method of, of harvesting. Binks, you there? You froze up again. Yeah. If any of you guys yeah. do what want to say? come up on the channel, um, I was asking you about uh, for you for the other way to harvest yeah, deer for hunt is archery. Uh, is that your preferred method of harvesting deer is through archery? Yeah, my preferred method is bow hunting compound over crossbow for me i just think crossbows are kind of like a gun i don't really like i mean i will gun hunt or pew pew hunt but uh <laughs> i yeah I as well now it's with the cross more more you're freezing up on me again bud um, I do have a bow. I can't wait to go actually bow hunt, but did I lose them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We lost you, Binks. Uh, bow hunting. I, something I, I do want to do. I have a really nice diamond infinite edge bow. I've had for a few years. I have to go get restrung. Uh -huh. Um, but I want to, who's back Binks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Don't forget muzzle loaders too. yeah, we can't forget muzzle loaders, black powder. That's another fun thing. Um, I used to have a six shot. Colt revolver that was uh, black powder, but uh, I do want to point out to my disabled viewers that in a lot of states, that if you're unable to use a bow due to your disability, that you are able to get certain permits and permissions to use a crossbow. It's the same. You're shooting an arrow, a smaller version, but you're an arrow nonetheless. But you will have the ability to have a sky uh, scope. You will be able to, you know, have mounts and things like that. That archers don't have in the tree stand so for disabled people don't shy away from i'm gonna buy a crossbow here maybe this year um i, I want to have one to go with my bow if i can't successfully use a bow and i'm gonna try um then i will move over to the crossbow and go from there but i'm pretty damn lethal with a bow and arrow my wife is very very should be she's everybody's surprised you see the blind man shoot a bow and arrow Ooh, i, I robin hood one i'm gonna make a plaque to go out with the bear 
with my arrow that I Robin Hood with the date and everything on it. So, yeah, well, your buddy's lethal. Binks, you're back. Are you back? He's frozen. Are you frozen again? Yeah, my phone does not look stream yards. I don't know why. <laughs> Do you have a VPN? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the VPNs cause issues. but And we have a heck of a delay, too. That's one thing I noticed. Like, when I, I ask you something, seeing, it, it's a good and minute and before yeah. you respond to it. And it, that's no big deal. That happens in radio, folks. That happens in TV. That's just part of the internet world. But just so you know, on your end, we do have a good delay between, you know, question and answer. Um, so now we've talked about the freedom packages. We've talked about... The pew pews, clothes, scent, scent blocker, tree stands. We've talked about blinds. Um, the last and final part is going to, well, no, actually optics. Optics is a big thing. Uh, I just want to brush real quick on this so we can move to the next fact uh, that's going to take a while. Optics basically is your Please choice. The blind Daryl Dixon. Not the blind Daryl Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <Mike> said. <laughs> um, optics basically comes <laughs> down to what you are comfortable with, what you can see with. Um, and you're going to have to learn the different numbers. I use a 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter scope, which that translates into the part that you look through. The smaller the millimeter, the smaller the viewfinder is the way I'm going to put it to you guys that you have to look through. So a 50 mil. It's probably about EA big. Okay. And I'm able to just look through it. I have 40 mil on the scope. I'm taking the tactical text. Again, I'm able to look through it. Once it gets smaller than 40 mil, when you get into like 20, uh, you know, 30 and 20, it gets a little harder. It makes my eye have to really work harder than it needs to. Um, <clears throat> so for me, a bigger, bigger viewfinder in the rear end is usually the best way to go. Also, a predominant set of reticles. A reticle, for those that don't know, is your crosshairs. You're up and down and your left and right. Your axis inside of your scope. Um, the scope I'm taking with me doesn't have the best reticles for me, but I've been practicing. Um, I want to get something with a more pronounced reticle in it. But again, scopes are... To each his own. Everybody has their own preference. You'll find your own way. You'll find whatever zoom is, works best for you, whatever uh, viewfinder size works best for you. And scopes can get cost more than the damn gun. So moving on from that part. Ready for this, Binks? We've shot our deer. We have dropped it deer down. We've sat and given it 30, 40 minutes to do its godly thing and to, you know, pass on. Pass on. We move on to the wonderful world of now what? What do we do now, Binks? We shot him. He's down. He's over there. I took my YouTube pictures. I got my Instagram shots and my Facebooks and my holding my gun and my horns and he's on the ground. The next step would be harvesting the animal. And how do we do that? What do we need? What do we need? See. The fun part about deer hunting, cleaning the animal. Well, can you? like what is the first thing that start to finish what is i mean don't go like lengthy detail but start to finish what is the first thing we have to do to harvest the animal and run us really quickly through what you do when you harvest your deer well take a picture and set up the weapon of choice take a picture and then after that it's best to cool the carcass as fast as possible so no spoilage happens and field 
dressing, get all your organs out that may uh, infect, or not, not infect, but spoil your meat, cause bacteria or whatever out. Um, yeah, um, make sure everything's out, um, get your blood out. And if you're dragging the deer out, make sure there's no leaves, dirt, that duty, because that can uh, cause bacteria and spoilage. Um, ruins your meat sometimes. Okay, I got a question for you. My cousin who has deer hunted before laughed his butt off when he told me this. And he said, because I'm going to leave it. Honestly, if we, God willing, we get one, I'm going to let Tactical Tech take the lead on dressing it and doing that. I am I want to have hands on, but at the same time, I don't want to mess nothing up and I don't want to screw the food up for people that are going to be eating it. Um, so... This was like a ha ha. My cousin was trying to be a smart aleck with me. He was telling me something about that when you clean it, be sure to pinch the booty hole. Do you know what that is or what that's about? Um, the only thing that I can think of doing that, uh, you do have to cut her. Butthole and make sure the uh, intestine is out. Um, That's what he was referring to. Yep. Clean, cutting uh, around the butthole. You ruined meat. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. You got to cut. That's one of the things when you field dress is that. Or they sell. And I'm not sponsored, but they sell a gadget nowadays that's called Butt Out, where you just stick it in. It's like a twig, not a twig, but it's, if you were to take a twig with like two little fork branches and then you were to like twist it. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like, kind of like cleaning like a lot with, uh, with the pull out and thing. Then you pull Shove it in there, give it a twist, and pull it out. <laughs> yeah, no, he was saying they have this product now that you just take, go to the deer, and you shove it in the food, and you twist, and you, and everything comes out. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> oh, wow, that's such a horrible thing, but hey, that's part of life. Listen, when you guys go to the store, and you get your cow, and you get your venison, and you get your this, and your pig, and your pork chops it comes from somewhere and all of this is done you just don't know about it maybe you should start learning about it and then, then you could go get your own animals and know where the hell they came from and what hormones are not being given to them um for me this hunt is eight years of wanting to put meat in my family's freezer it's it's different going to the store and buying a slab of meat and sticking it in your freezer than it is to go for two days and hope you get something try to get something now this is me going on a trip now on the other side of it this is tactical technician doing weeks of prep weeks of planning weeks of putting this out and weeks of doing this to the area um <laughs> you know to hunters that go out and hunt do you have people to put food plots the food plot is there designed to attract the year, the animals throughout the year so that when hunting season comes, they're in their little brains going, hmm, I know Binks put some food over here the other day. Let me go over here and see it's still here because that was free food. and I could just eat it and they'll go over there and you're ready for them. Um, so there's a lot that goes into hunting. We are just briefly brushing upon me going on a trip, you know. I want to be as much prepared for what I'm getting into as I can be. I want to not have to hinder 
tactical technician on any of this. I want to be on his heels. He is going to be the major. I am going to be the private. I'm going to do what I'm told, when I'm told, how fast I'm told to do it, and hope that I can put food in not just my home, but his. That's my hopes. So, And I would love to put the head on my wall. I really would love to do that. And that I don't care how that sounds. It's not in any cruel intention. Um, I have pictures of my very first bass. So I would like to have pictures or I would like to have a trophy of my very first, you know, hunt. And a head on the wall with a deer, whether it's a doe or it's a buck, I'm going to be very proud of. Hell, if it's a chipmunk and I put him on the wall, I'm going to be proud of it. <laughs> maybe not the head of a chipmunk maybe not the head of a chipmunk maybe the whole damn chipmunk coming out <laughs> the wall like I will say. freakish pose <laughs> squirrels are gonna be your number one enemy in the tree stand what do you mean they're gonna mess with you in the tree stand You're, all you're going to hear is, you're going to look, and it's a stupid squirrel, and you think it's a big old buck or a big old doe. Bye. You know, I know what you're talking about. When I went with Swamp Stalker, and we went on our hog hunt, and we were sitting in the morning, early in the morning, damn squirrels were everywhere. Mike says you will definitely get some Everywhere. We'll okay. Um... Now, hog hunt go morning. Hog hunt goes and passes. Sun's up too far. He says, "Hey, let's go. Go. We heard all them damn squirrels this morning. Let's change loads in the shotgun. Let's go back in the woods. Let's get you a squirrel or two or three. We'll make stew." All right, I'm in on it because it was a lot of damn squirrel that morning. They were annoying as hell. Now we go to squirrel hunt. The damn forest is quiet. You can hear a pin drop. There ain't no squirrel nowhere. None. I mean. You pissed me off all morning during my hog hunt. Now I'm coming for you, and you want to be quiet. <laughs> Maybe it's just my luck. I don't know. <laughs> Mike says, though, this, uh, you'll definitely get something. That's the thing. When you're hunting squirrels, when you're squirrel hunting, you see deer. It, it does not work out. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence there, Bing. So, you know, you just made me feel a whole lot better, bro. <laughs> no, but Mike and I have talked about it, Tactical Tech and I. Um, you know, the what if scenario, okay? Because we are going out there to hunt deer, we are going out there to create content uh for you guys. And as a as a producer of many years, I've learned to look at both sides of the coin. Uh, what if we go out and we don't get anything all weekend? Well, great. We had a great trip, we had a lot of fun, made new friends and family, uh, we took people along for the ride. Showed them what we did, showed them what we what we think didn't work, showed them the real life of hunting. Okay, that's that side. Now, what if day one, first thing in the damn morning, we drop our deer? Then what? The weekend's over, right? No, 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 it can't be over because I'm still there for two days and we got to create content. So that's where Mike was like, well, then that's when we shift gears and we go after hog. And if we get and and if we get our hog, let's say we get our hog Friday night. Now what? We still got Saturday. And that, that's when we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna go after rabbit. We're going after the wascally rabbit. Ho, 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 ho. And if that fit that comes through, then last but not least, we're gonna go after the tree rat. So that's the plan. Because you gotta have a plan, guys. You've got to have a plan. If your hunt goes successful, then what? If your hunt doesn't go successful, then what? We are there to create content. You have four days of content creation um that you have to utilize as best you can. Maybe, I don't know, maybe one episode will be us shooting off guns in the afternoon because we're bored as hell and we need you know, nothing happened. I don't know, but we, we're going to have a lot of great stuff for you guys. That's for sure. It's going to be a uh, travel vlog. It's going to be day one hunt, morning hunt, nighttime hunt. 
we may spend the night in the blind to get that jump on the next day um you never know but i'm excited it's going to be great content for you guys binks i thank you for everything you told me tonight that you told our viewers um i thank you guys for the comments for sure and this, this isn't over yet mind you i'm just saying thank you because it, it's important to me i want to know as much as i can before I, I i put myself um in a situation where uh it, it's dinner or no dinner it's life or death so to speak and like tomorrow i'm headed to the range i have laser bore sighted my rifle in my oh, excuse me my pew pew in so tomorrow i'm headed to the freedom package delivery area that everybody can go to and i'm going to sight in my freedom delivery system i'm going to make sure that my bore sight gets me within now for you guys you might want to say okay infantry and this i'll be happy with this if i can get three shots in a group this big which on a deer would be heart, lung, area. As long as I get him in the shoulder, I'm good. I'll be happy with that. I don't want to hit the animal and make it suffer. I want to hit him and drop him. So I've spent two days playing with the boar sight, putting it in, in the backyard, putting it out on my, my freedom package range in the backyard. Tomorrow we're going to the forest where I can put it at 50 and 100 yards and really see what we can get. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think I've covered all my bases. Is there anything my I have forgotten? Freedom. Binks, anything you think we forgot or might have missed? I, I don't think we missed much. If anything, then it's something little, but deer hunting. Play the wind, say sent free. You're good to go. Oh, and one other thing, depending on where you hunt, wear snake boots. If you come to my state, wear snake boots. If you go to Texas, wear snake oh, boots. Yeah. If you go to Arkansas, where I'm headed with Tactical Tech, he's advised, wear snake boots. So wherever you are in the country, I don't know where you are. If you have snakes, wear snake boots. Just be safe, people. And that's the other thing. Be safe. Go to West Virginia. You... Oh, you're in Virginia? Okay. Oh, no. I'm in Ohio, but you go to West Virginia, wear snake boots. Oh, yeah. No, if you go anywhere, like, from me up, wear snake boots. Northern or Southern? No, he's in, where'd you say you were? Idaho, Iowa? Iowa. Me? Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. That's where my wife's from, or where she was born. I'm in that library. Yeah. Hey, hey, I tease her all the time. You know, what the hell do you want to be a Buckeye for? Like, it's a nut on a tree. Who the hell wants to be a nut on a tree? I'm a proud nut on a tree, okay? You know, and I'm just giving you shit, too, Binks, because it's, it's all family fun, but who the hell wants to be a nut that falls off a tree? I'm a proud Buckeye. Yeah. You can't even be called a respectable nut. You got to be called a buckeye. Yep. There's peanuts. There's walnuts. You got to be a buckeye. There's only one buckeye. Yeah. And it ain't worth a damn neat. That's a big O. <laughs> and it ain't worth a damn neat. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. I'm so bad. So, guys, again, wherever you are around the world, I'm thank you for joining us. seed to fall on you. That has Spikes, those can hurt. He said the Buckeye seeds fall on you, they hurt. I know, they do. They're really hard as shit. Yeah, you remember when you were a baby, right? And they fell on you. When did you leave Ohio? Six months old. So you remember a whole lot about Ohio, right? Yeah. yeah it's six months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love giving her crap. See, I'm 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 a Florida boy. I don't follow sports. No roll tide. No I roll don't, tide, Mike. No I, roll tide, Mike. I don't care no, about no, sports. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't watch football. I don't give a damn about football, basketball, soccer, hockey, football. I used to watch NASCAR. For blind people, that's great because it's a big ass car that goes around in a yeah, circle. No, so if no, you no, miss him this lap, he'll be back around another lap, and you can watch. Um, 
but I don't follow sports. So, <laughs> but I have a Florida boy. Co- he's talking college football. You know, it makes sense, right? Because think about it, Binks. Every sport, football, <laughs> basketball, hockey, you have to follow the ball. You have to be able to see the ball to follow the sport. I'm you can't sorry, do Alabama's that. got Saban for a coach. There's no hope. No. Saban was with Miami, and they made him lose, and they'll make Alabama. Okay, yeah, no sports talk, because I don't know what the hell y'all are talking about or any of these people. Mike knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Mike knows. Mike knows. Mike hey, Mike, knows if it's not the University of Miami, <laughs> then you have to go somewhere. If it's not the Dolphins, as much as they suck, you can't come here. All right, this is a Florida channel. No Sorry about your luck. Either. Sorry about your luck. All right, they could suck eggs and, and rotten ones at that, but it's still Florida. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even, like I said, I, I don't, don't watch them. I don't care to watch them. I, I, I find humor in people that get balls deep into football games and like they're the ones winning. I, if you're one of them people, I'm not meaning any harm by this saying this, but I find you hilarious that you put so much effort into a team that you get nothing from. You buy merchandise, you spend money on the cable network to watch it. You're four, five, six months out of the year stuck, glued to the television. You're rooting for people who don't give a damn about you and are making money off of you. I just don't see the win in it. I don't see the point in watching it. I My mean, he's been an Alabama fan for 30 years. I've been that's a me. Ice and first, so hey, that's what I won't even say how long that is, but it's more than 30. And hey, look, everybody's <laughs> entitled. I mean, look, I played football, okay? I was a I was a quarterback and I was a wide receiver. I played basketball, I played roller hockey. Uh, we don't have hockey in Florida other, other than the one, you know, real hockey rink that you have to pay a lot of money to go to. So I play roller hockey. I played sports. I just can't watch them. And I don't see the point of being stuck to the TV going, oh, my God, is he, is he going to win? Is he not going to win? And then if your team loses, you're so pissed off at the world because your team lost. And people get in <laughs> fist fights over losing football games. And I don't get it. Uh, Are you one of those guys being so am I making fun of you? And like you? that's why you're not saying a word because you're that guy. And. <laughs> I'm making it. <laughs> it's not intentionally to, to, to be mean or anything, but I, I don't get it. I don't. I don't watch sports. <laughs> okay. Good. Yay! I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that don't watch sports. Yay. I swear to God, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> uh, I'll watch the MLF. I watch Jimmy Houston or Bill Dance, you know, the old program, Bill Dance Today. I watch that. But football, basketball, hockey, soccer, or football, whichever country you're from, I really don't care. Football. Cricket. Hell, I've even been to cricket matches. All right. I have a ball in my safe signed by a world famous cricketer that is in my safe just because I have it. And, and it was signed by this world famous cricketer. I have no idea who he was, but he's world famous, and I got his autograph on a cricket <laughs> ball, and it's worth a lot of money. So it's in the safe. That I mean, come on. <laughs> we go to monster trucks. That that you want to talk? We talk monster, monster trucks. Jam. Monster jam. That's a sport for blind people. Big giant monster trucks that you can't miss if you even if you were deaf. Okay, they're so loud, they're so big, <laughs> and they're awesome. Mike says I can see DJ watching the sports on TV. Like, how can I? Like, how I put the pew pew for duck hunt up against the TV? <laughs> Laugh out loud. What is it? Mike says I can see DJ watching the sports on TV. Like, how I put the pew pew for duck hunt up against the TV. Duck hunt. He's going back You're, to Nintendo. No, he meaning he puts the gun up close to the TV. To the TV. For he forget. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. So I get it. Mikey, Mikey, mind you, the the TV in the living room is seventy inches. The TV in the bedroom is like eighty five inches. I have big TVs in my house. I and and here's something for y'all to find funny because I played football and because I played basketball and hockey. Funny. The only reason I can in even watch it. Is because when they line up, I know the play. When they 
they're getting ready to do something. I know what man to follow because I know who I'd throw the ball to, or I'd shoot the puck to, or I know who's going to be on the, it, it, the way they're lined up. Is it a passing play or is it a running play? Okay. Well, you got pretty much three out of five areas that the ball is going to go. I can kind of follow it, but it's not fun. Like it is for you. You know, my fun at football games, to be honest, getting piss ass drunk while the wife has fun watching I'm football. Watching yeah. I, I like the girls. I look at the girls and the wife makes sure, hey, the cheerleaders are coming in our way. Look. And then she makes sure I don't miss the Mine pretty girls. His is, 75. his is what? His TV. Oh, 75? Oh, yeah. You can see it. It's blind guy the blind, It's blind guy approved. It's 75 inches. If you're under 60, you're not blind guy approved. Imagine how I was as a child. Remember the old 27 inch tube TVs and that was the biggest shit out? Yeah, no, I had to sit like this. In front of the TV. Hmm. Honesty is honesty, you know? We all learn But then from again, it. you had to sit that close anyways to turn the dial. Yeah, but then <laughs> again, I was the designated remote. That's what it was. My parents loved that shit. Hey, honey, turn it to channel four. Clang, 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 clang. <laughs> tune it in a little bit. You had the little inner knob. You had to tune the inner knob. Y'all young people knobs. have no damn idea. No idea what I'm talking about. That You had the top clacker and you had the bottom clacker. The top clacker was UHF. <laughs> The bottom clacker was VHF. So you got four, two, four, six, ten. Even numbers. And and I think that was it on our network. And then you drop down to the VHF and you want 29, 33, 39, 42, and 48. And the back two are the damn uh, 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 evangelist channels. The televangelists that wanted your money all night long because God would kill you if you didn't give them their money. Um, <laughs> that's what it was back in the day. So y'all didn't know it was... Hey, we, we need to go to put on the news. Channel 7. Kong, 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 kong. All right. Hey, you got to move the antenna a little bit. All right. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. You remember that, Banks? Come on, Banks. You got to know. Mike you got to know. DJ on a 27 inch sit was sitting inside the TV to watch it. Pretty much. <laughs> and let me tell you something. When 3D came out, for y'all people that, that are old enough to remember when 3D came out, like Jaws 3D was one of the first 3D movies that ever came out. Um, Friday the 13th, Freddy, uh, the Freddy movie, Dream, the Dreamcatcher was one of the very first 3D concept movies that came out. I have one eye, meaning I don't see depth ever. So my dad, being a smart guy that he was, tried to, every time a movie came out, configure something, some way. To try to enable me to get the experience you guys would get. Now we folded the glasses over with the red and the blue. Back in the day, we had red and the blue spectacles. Y'all remember that? Y'all got to remember the red and blue boxes. He folded in half, put a light in between. We tried so many ways for me to be able to watch what you guys see as 3D, and it's just not possible. Um, but it was neat. Nonetheless, I, I can kind of get what you guys see and, and imagine if – the the thing flying at the screen like my hand came out in front of you I, I could get that but i don't know i don't know you like 3d movies binks 3d is a cool thing i will say that 3d is a cool feature 3ds are very i've watched i don't know a couple movies in 3d at the movie theater it's not bad. It's expensive, bro. I know some people. Some people get headaches from it. Some people can't watch it. Um, some people it, it affects their their optical. You know, it bothers. It messes with your eyes. Um, I know some people that that think it's the coolest thing is in the world. Um, a lot of the rides when you go to the theme parks. This is where theme parks. Y'all got to step it up uh, and offer something instead for the folks like me that can't see 3d because when i send when i go to disney world and i'm paying a hundred dollars to come in the damn theme park and i can't go on five rides because it's 3d and i can't see 3d wife and kids go in but you should have like a bar or something outside for for people that can't see 3d bar. <laughs> uh, yeah something you know it's gotta be something because you know i don't get the full disney experience you know but the wife and the kids have fun. Like they have, what's the one you got? The bugs life where the bugs crawl over the damn place. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then my, my son came out scared out of that one. I, it, for me, it's a blurry movie. Yeah, honestly, an hour and a half is five. It, it's a blurry movie. 
It hurts my eyes. You hear me? What? You're an hour and a half of five. I'm what? An hour and a half of five. Five people? Yeah. I think we covered everything. Binks, do you think there's anything I'm not knowing about before my hunt Mike next week? Says IMAX is really awesome. If there's anything that I think of, I will direct message you on Instagram. Uh, but as of right now, I think I we covered everything real. Yeah, I, I think we did too. And and I'm really looking forward to this, guys. I'm flying out Thursday next week. I'll be back Sunday. We will be live streaming from Arkansas. That is for sure. We have a sponsor for the drink uh, this week. We are having Red Stag and Dr. Pepper. I love that drink, man. Boxy got me hooked. Um, but if you guys have a drink you like to sponsor, you want to become a sponsor of the week, all you got to do is get a hold of us, let us know your drink recipe, PayPal us the amount for the drink recipe, and we will make a night dedicated to your channel. Something fun, something exciting, and just have we a good time. You know, hey, oh yeah, and Christmas is coming up. So make sure you guys remember Christmas Day, we will be live at 10 o'clock. Just like we are now, we will be doing a giveaway of the Sun Life Power Inverter. We will also be doing the uh, Santa's, um, what do you call it? Stocking. Stocking raffle. If you guys want to get in on the raffle early, I'm going to set it at the same PayPal. If you guys want to get on it, on it early, all you have to do is in your message, they're going to be $5 for raffle tickets. All you have to do is message Christmas raffle. And I'll know to put your name on a piece of paper and to put you into the drawing for the Christmas raffle. Um, Tactical Tech won the Thanksgiving raffle. He's got summer sausage coming. He's got homemade. Binks, you got some too coming. Homemade pecans by yours truly. He's got uh, a battle axe that, that the producer picked out. He's got two thermal coffee mugs coming. He's got fire starter. He's got a phone uh, uh, I don't want to tell everything okay. in there, but he's got a bunch of stuff coming. Listen, the box is probably seven or eight pounds. It's probably cost me $50 to send a thing there, but that's what we're doing. And Christmas, I'm going to do the same thing, but we're going to do a stocking. So I'm going to put different stuff in the stocking. It's going to be Christmas oriented. So snacks and things like that will be Christmas oriented. And um, I think it'll be fun. I think we'll have a good time. And whoever wins, it's going to be very happy. So, and on Christmas as well, I have some presents to give away. So make sure you're here because you never know if your channel is one of the ones getting a present that Santa will be leaving under the tree. Mike says we will have to do a reveal video. A reveal? What are we revealing? What are we revealing? I can't be too revealing, Mike. My wife will get jealous. Yeah. No. She'll want to be there, you know? Yeah. Take pictures. <laughs> Oh, Lord, Binks, you can tell it's almost midnight, right? <laughs> What'd you say? I said, oh, you can tell it's almost midnight, right? <laughs> so are you heading out, Binks, tomorrow for a hunt? What do you? What, what's your hunting season looking like? What are you doing? I don't, I don't even know when I'm next hunting, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, I have no clue. If I do go out, it's probably not going to be too soon. Uh, but if I do, I'm going with my buddy in that southern Ohio. And I'm, I usually go with him. And I think his truck's broke, so I'm not sure. In Ohio, what, what kind of deer do you go after? Because that's another thing, too, guys. We have... Um, you guys can see the deer behind me. Okay. I had someone, I posted like I do every Monday to tell you guys about the live stream across all social media platforms. And in one of the social media groups that I'm with on Facebook is a hunting group. It's not a deer hunting group, but it's a hunting group. So I posted in the hunting group thinking you hunt more than this certain animal. Um, and one of the comments that I got back was, it was pretty, you know, I, I had to question myself at first, but the comment was, here's a guy posting about deer hunting with a picture of an elk. It must be a scam. Now, when I looked up this picture, mind you, I haven't been deer hunting, 
but I'm not stupid. This behind me, what I have here is a reindeer. This, to best of my knowledge, of animals, and I've owned 27 reindeer. I've my owned them. I have had them. I've personally fed them. We've had them in the theme park. That's a reindeer. So it was one of those where I was like, you know what, dude? I don't want to say nothing. I'm just going to leave it go. The dude wanted to call me a bot or spam or whatever because I put an elk and deer hunting. I mean, it may not be a white tail, but damn it, that's that's a deer back there. It's Mike's not an elk. Go Mike, have a good one, bro. I know you're on the road. I know you're doing all that hey, stuff. Welcome. I will nice. talk to you soon. Yeah, when I seen it, I thought it was an elk. But now that you say it, it's a reindeer, that the the fur looks kind of red to be an elk. Elk's more of a darker brown than a, a like a reddish brown. Yeah, it was just one of those bigs where I, somebody tried to you know make me look stupid or to <laughs> to comment to just to be mean. I mean, all, even if it was an elk. Your host is a blind guy who's never been deer hunting. So if I put a damn elk up there on accident, well, I'm sorry. I, I, if I offended you, I apologize. How the hell that could offend you? I don't get it. But, oh, okay. Okay. You know? It's all in fun. But, my brother, that's where we're going to wrap it up. It does think, look like an elk. Bro. Does it look like an elk? I've never been elk hunting. I don't have elk. But I've had reindeer, and that looks like the reindeer I've owned many, many times. So, And the caption says reindeer. <laughs> so I, I kind of just went with it. I didn't want to put a white tail up there. I mean, that thing looks like it's pissed off, like he deserves to be shot. Like he's like, <laughs> You put Bambi up there, you start having like FEMA and everybody come after you. <laughs> but Binks, thank you, brother, for hanging out with me. Uh, like I said, I'll get your package out in the mail. All of the packages are going out tomorrow. Uh, it'll be coming UPS. Yeah, UPS is who we're using. It's the cheaper one. It's the cheaper one. And believe it or not, UPS is cheaper than the USPS. So we're gonna send it UPS. Um, UPS or USPS? No, it's coming UPS. The oops truck. Okay. Yeah, it's coming on the oops truck. Yeah, I'm starting to not like USPS right now because I am waiting on my arrows for this bow, and they were supposed to come come in last this past Saturday, and it's almost been a week, and they're still not here. My postal service here isn't bad. It's just it's cheaper. It's rural. I, and I'm in a country like maybe some of you are, maybe you are, Binks. Um, you know, I'm in a town. I'm not even in a city. I'm outside of the city where I actually do my business. Um, but it's not bad. But when I go to the post office and I go to UPS and UPS is cheaper than the post office, I'm going to go with whoever's cheaper. My package is still getting to you. It's not doing any damn thing differently, but he wants to charge this <clears throat> and you want to charge that. Well, you know what? That's where I'm going to go. But, um, brother, thank you again for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of the info, all of the knowledge. For those watching on the replay, if you made it this far, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe because we got a lot coming up here on the program. Friday nights, live streams, 10 p.m. every Friday night. And we upload two, well, once to twice a week if I can help it. New videos up. Be sure you check it out because there is a giveaway in that video. I'm surprised nobody has commented the phrase to get the, the, the thing here. So, um, yeah. But we're giving away a power inverter. Give it a day. It's only been a day. Yeah, it's only been a day. But uh, I'm just surprised out of the comments that are here. I would have been all over it. The free power inverter? Heck, yeah. And it's not even being sent to you by me. The company is sending it out to you guys. I got them to do take care of all the legwork. Um, so big shout out to Song Life for that. Got to give him credit for that. Thank you, guys. So, my man, the next time I talk to you, I will be in Arkansas. You're going to join us for the live stream, right? I'm sure I will. Awesome. 
Awesome. Well, next Friday, we come to you live from Arkansas. It is Operation Deer Down Mission Arkansas. Uh, and if anybody wants to sponsor the event, please do so. Uh, every little bit helps. And you will be recognized in all of the series videos. So it's going to be a Friday video, a Saturday video, maybe two videos, Saturday and Sunday. So a lot of advertising opportunity for channels, a lot of advertising for businesses. So write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. And at lastly, you can always check out our website, infantryoutdoors.com. I have a lot of things coming up. I actually have some guided things coming up here uh, starting in January. I'm going to be doing some guided fishing tours, some guided hikes through the woods, some overnighters in the woods. i got a lot. It's wintertime here in Florida, so it's actually comfortable where we can go live in the woods. So we're going to do that this winter. Um, and you guys are coming along. So check it out, infantryoutdoors.com. Photo galleries, so much more. If you've ever linked with me, if you're a YouTuber, you're going to be in the celebrity gallery. So Binks, when I fly out to you one of these days, brother, you're going to be on the website too. We're going to be sitting there going, hey. <laughs> maybe with a deer you never know we'll go bull hunting bring my wife home from buckeyes but she shut the hell up yep. <laughs> Ohio deer baby hey, that'd be a fun good. That'd be a oh. wait what did you say what, what did you say what candies buckeyes yeah Those are good. You can eat a buckeye? Yes. If they're done the right way. No, they like candies, huh? Peanut butter, peanut butter. Peanut, what are they? Peanut butter. I don't know what they are. Peanut butter something. And they have like chocolate. They, they make it look like a buckeye nut. And it's, oh, it's so oh, oh, oh. He's talking about they make a candy yeah. that looks yeah. like a buckeye. Yeah. But can you eat a buckeye? Yeah. You can't eat a buckeye, right? Off the, you know, the falls from the tree. I, I don't think so. See, so, so, so not only is your state, it's a useless nut. We're useless nuts. Not, not only is your state nut unedible, then that means all of the buckeye women are too. Then, <laughs> darn it, I'm not going to that How state. Close is he to Cedar Point? I'm gonna do Cedar. <laughs> are you near Cedar Point, there, Binks? Cedar Point, yeah, I'm about an hour from Cedar Point. An hour away. So, yeah, so when I come up for that deer, we'll make a family, like, I'll take, like, a week. That's like an amusement we'll Make a family trip. Do we'll do Cedar Point one weekend and, and go get our deer the next weekend. Or vice versa. That'd be a lot of fun. i get Binks on a roller coaster. I'm not sure <laughs> what Cedar Point closes. Well, now with the with the whole pandemic and anything, I, I don't want to go to any theme park, to be honest with you, because you're not going to get the full money experience. You're paying ex Disney, no, but like Cedar Point, I, yes. I'm using, for example, obviously Disney and, and theme parks like that, that where you have people to meet and greet. And there's there's a big part of the experience that that covid has screwed up. Um, I won't be taking my kids to that until life kind of normalizes itself. But if it was just a park that was just to go there to ride the hell out of some roller coasters, I'm good with that. You know, like Six Flags. There ain't crap to do at Six Flags but ride roller coasters. Universal. Well, no, because even Universal, you want to meet your movie theaters, just your movie people. I love roller coasters, Banks. I love them. You ever go to Cedar Point? No, no, I've heard about go it. Go to Cedar Never Point. Been. Make sure you buy. Make sure you buy your tickets online because if you buy them at the gate, they're like eighty bucks a person. Oh wow! Huh? <laughs> like eighty bucks a head if you buy them at the gate. He said, "Buy them online before you go." What? Cedar Point. Oh yeah. All right, my man. Well, we're going to call it finito for this evening. I thank you again, and I will look forward to talking to you next Friday as we broadcast live from Arkansas. Um, Binks, thank you so much for your, your information. If you guys haven't checked out Bass and Binks, check them out. Awesome channel. Uh, make sure you go over, show them some support, show them some love. 
Uh, let them know you've seen them in the live stream, all that good sort of stuff. Make sure you smash the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. It's absolutely free. Don't cost them to hit that button and become part of the infantry. So, Binks, any other comments before we head out for the night? Last thoughts, last hey, words? Dodgy. Dodgy. Got it. Well, we got to do cheers no. real quick. Uh, thanks for cheers, having Dodgy. me. And uh, uh, I hope I, I hope I uh, help someone out with deer hunting. I know you helped me out, brother. I know you did for sure. Because knowledge is power, and the more knowledge you go into the woods with, the more powerful your experience will be. Just know that, guys. Don't go into the woods half-assed. Go into the woods with as much knowledge as you can, and you'll have a great time. Binks, thanks again, brother. You have an awesome night. And uh, guys, wherever you are around the world, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys make this a memorable Friday night each and every night. Remember to join us next Friday night as we talk about well, the deer operation that we're doing in Arkansas with Tactical Technician. So on behalf of myself, the producer, and the team here at Infantry Outdoors, we thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for following us on all social media platforms. Remember to find us on our website at infantryoutdoors.com. And, well, I hope that this and all of my adventures expires you to get outdoors. Until we meet again, I am the Blind Sniper, a.k.a. DJ Infantry. Y'all have a blessed night, and we'll see you Friday live from Arkansas. Take care, everybody.